In this video, we'll show you how to remove and replace your rear drum brakes on a Jeep Wrangler located behind the rear wheels. So we're gonna remove the wheel, 19 millimeter socket, and just take it off. Now we can take our drum, pull it right off. You can see our shoes. Our hardware is fairly new, so that's good. If it's not rusted, broken, or missing, you need to replace it. But we're going to get right into it. On brake shoes, on most drum shoes, you'll have a primary shoe and a secondary shoe. So you want to compare those to the new shoes to see if you have a shorter one or a longer one. So that way you know which shoe goes where. Also, you have a camera on your phone, so I would take a picture so that way you know where the springs go, mounting screws, and the adjuster. Remove your top springs with our spring tool. The adjuster cable, make sure that's good. If not, you're going to need to replace that. And down here we have this spring loaded. So you'll see it's a little arm, a little spring that goes over that adjuster arm. Bring it out like that. Now we can take this off, like that. We'll take the spring out with the shoe. So you're gonna get your brake shoe retainer spring tool. Turn and turn counterclockwise. I take the pins right out and I examine them. I know they're new, but if they're old, you wanna make sure that the T-top piece is still in contact, not flattened, meaning worn out like a pin because they'll just pop off. You want it to have that nice little T-shape to it. Same on that side. Take the pin right out. You can take a, put them on the left and on the right to confirm. Sometimes you'll have shorter pins, one on one side, long on the other, so you don't want to mess that up. Now, I know that the back shoe is attached by a e-brake pivot. I'm gonna take my cross member bar out. And that's how it sits inside. The spring is on the secondary side. Grab that shoe, grab the back one. You see the e-brake pivot, and there it is. So ours was undone. I'll show you how to reinstall it. Adjuster, bottom spring, and here's that spring for that lock that keeps that adjuster in place. I take the shoes right off. That way you can just take the adjuster out that way. Not worry about it. So before you mount your new shoes on, you want to take a wire brush and clean this whole back surface. That way you can also check the condition of your backing plate, make sure that it's not rotted, doesn't have any holes in it, and that the mounting spots are in good shape. I have a catch bucket because I'm going to spray it with parts cleaner, brake cleaner, get rid of all this brake dust. So you see the highlighted points? That's what I'm sanding. Highlighted point here, here, and here. There's three on both sides, front and back. That's where the shoe actually rides up against the backing plate. And I actually noticed that there's a boot missing. I'm going to find one that I know I have in stock somewhere. If you don't have them, you can buy them. They're in a little package. I recommend it because now water's going to get in there and cause havoc. You want to keep that sealed up the best it can be. Let's just clean this all down. I'm also going to clean this hub because that's not a good mounting surface for the actual drum. I use the wire brush to get closer to the hub, center of it, make sure there's no rust build up. All right, let's clean that. So I found a used boot that I had. Like I said, you want to make sure all your areas are sealed up. I'm going to put that on. That's actually an inspection location, so you can take that boot out and you'll see the shoe and the thickness of it. So you don't have to pull the wheel to see how your brake shoes are. Now I'm going to take some caliper grease before I install my shoes. 
and I'm going to mark and put it on the highlighted points. And you can be generous with this, doesn't matter. That stops the shoes from being metal to metal. You want it to glide smoothly. And caliper grease is different than regular grease. It has a higher temp meltdown point, and that way it doesn't end up getting hot and going all over your shoes. So like I said, you have three spots in the front, three in the back. Now I'm going to grab my new shoes. I'm going to grab the primary shoe first so I can put the e-brake on. Now in our case, we don't have a bigger shoe in the back, which is usually primary and secondary, the shorter shoe in the front. But we do have a metal pivot, and that is where that spring and that adjuster clip is going to sit. So we know that this goes to the rear, which is the primary shoe, and you're going to take that e-brake bracket and slide it right in that top notch. Then you can line it up right there, and I'm going to get my pin, and I'm going to bring it right through the backing plate, and I'm going to grab my new spring, put that on, the cover, center that cover, take the tool, slide the tool right over, and now I'm going to push down on that spring and turn clockwise till I feel it lock. It sits in a little groove. Now I did have my finger on the backing plate holding the backing of that stud, which is what you want to do. Now before I install my secondary shoe, I'm going to get that adjuster and I'm going to take this apart and clean it up. Ours is fairly new, but I'm going to unthread it, take all the threads out. I'm going to take the wire brush to it and I'm going to put like a copper never sees, or you can put the caliper grease in there sometimes or silicone paste. You want to make sure that keeps spinning as your vehicle works down the road because it adjusts the shoes as you go. I can just take this copper brush right to it, wire brush, clean those threads off. Let that dry. I'm going to coat the threads with my copper anti-seize. That way I don't have to worry about it seizing up. Some shoes or some things you might have to bring it all the way down because the shoes are new, they're thicker. Our shoes were partially worn and this was extended out quite a bit. I'm going to go right there. I'm going to take that excess off and I'm going to place it inside right there so that I can take this and spin it around and seat that. If I need to add more, I will. That's pretty good. Now let's get the other shoe and the bottom spring. So we know the shoe sits like this. We have the bigger notch out for the top and the lower little hook down below. So I'm going to take my spring and go on the top. I'm in the hole on the primary shoe. That little hole on the back one is taken by the pin. I'm going to slide it in like that, bring that up, and I'm going to hold it. Now this is where I'm going to put my adjuster in. So we want to pay attention to where the adjuster will sit. Now on this, I want it to go this way because it's shorter distance, so that little bracket can move that. So slide it in there and then put it in that one, just like that. Now don't forget to put that cross member bar in. It's the expansion bar. The hump will sit on the top of the axle like this and the spring will go on the secondary shoe side. Bring this fork in and bring it and put it on the e-brake pivot and the shoe. Line the front one up, just like that. Now you might have to hold it in place and we'll get the back pin, put the back pin in line it up like that, get the spring in the cap, put that on, and then we'll get our tool. There we go. Push it down and spin it till it goes through and turn it clockwise. See how it's got a cross? I'm writing that T perfectly and the opening is opposite. So 
So now we can put this spring on. It goes like this. You want the hook on the inside. You're going to go right down to that pin that came with the shoes. Remember that? So put that little, just like that. It's got a little tension to it. And you see the half moon kind of cut out. So you're going to put the larger side in, so the pin. Then you're going to bring it up. Let it lock in, just like that. The spring is going to go on the outside. This is where I get a little pair of pliers or your, your cutters. Something that you can grab that easily with. Bring it around. Let that sit right down on top, just like that. Now see how it mechanism moves that? So we're going to take our half moon pivot. We're going to put some caliper grease on it. You put it right on there if you want. Because that's where we want this to seat and be able to move back and forth with the motion of the brake shoes, just like that. See? Now we can take our slacker cable. This goes on first before any springs. You want this part of the spring facing the drum side. So go ahead and put that on like that. Just rest it there. And now we're going to take that primary spring, put that on first. If you've noticed, the primary and secondary top springs are identical on this particular model. And slide that in, just like that. We're going to put the top spring on now for the secondary shoe. I'm going to give it a quick look over. All the springs are seated, our center bar is in. Adjust is still seated nicely. And last but not least, now we can see that back hook in the back. We're going to bring it down. Now we're going to take this. You can use a screwdriver if you need to or a pry bar. You're going to lift up on this and hook it right into that. Just like that. Now it gives tension so that that adjuster is constantly hitting that star. Now I'm just going to take some anti-seize on a brush and I'm going to put it right where that hub and drum meet. So the next time I don't have to worry about sanding all that rust off. Just a light thin coat is all you need. Just stops the rust forming from steel to steel. Spray off the packaging oil, brake clean or parts cleaner. Now once you've sprayed that, let it dry. All right, so now our drum is dry and we're ready to install it. Let's see if the shoes need to be adjusted. Yep. So now we're gonna take our adjuster and back off on that thread. So pull out on that little metal tab that stops it from lowering the shoes. See how that moves? I'm gonna go to the lowest point. Just like that. And now I'm going to take it, reseat those, make sure it's seated good. Take my drum and line up the studs. Now we're ready to adjust our shoes. So get your wheel. Install it, put your lug nuts on. It's a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to just snug it up. Go in a star pattern. The wheel torque for this specific vehicle is 85 to 110 foot pounds. I'm going to go right at 110 because it is of older age. You're going to torque it in star pattern. Double check. So now with a 
brake adjuster tool. It's a, a little flat blade. You can also use a flat screwdriver, but I'm going to remove the inspection with the adjuster boot. Get that right out of the way. And I can see the actual star. It's right here. That's the adjusting part of it. Now, I remember when I put it together, the clip was on the bottom of it. So that would tell me that it's going to move like this to adjust the star out. So you're going to go from the top and pull down. Hear that clicking? That tells me I'm going the right direction. So that bar that goes on that spring load is actually a lock to stop it from backing off. And it also adjusts every time you apply the brakes, it'll spin that wheel. So the proper way to adjust is with the tire on and you want to spin it until you hear those shoes start to hit the drum. Hear that sound? That's the shoes starting to hit the drum. Now to do this properly, you can mark it. If you do it from the outside, you can uh, spin it and check for a, um, the valve stem. But So what we'll do then is right through here, I can see the valve stem is right here. And I'm going to spin this wheel. I want it to get a full rotation before it stops on its own. Yeah, it's right here. That's perfect for me. Because as you go down the road, drum brakes, shoes, they actually expand just because of the heat. And you don't want it over tight because it will lock the wheel up. And under tight will give you a low brake pedal. So I like the adjustment. I have no locking either way. And I have just the right amount of drag. I'm going to put that boot back in. And now we're ready to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.